week's episode of Parasite the Maxim escalates into a blood-curdling high school massacre. This week's episode was pretty freaking disturbing. Filled to the brim with a lot of blood, gore, guts, decapitations, and tons of wiggly parasite monsters. There's also a little bit of room for action. We get to learn that the government has figured out how to distinguish regular people from parasite people, and they're trying to figure out how to cover up this whole parasite situation. It also looks like Shinichi and Murano are finally going to start to patch things up. However, it's going to be kind of a rough and bloody road to get there, and that's where this episode opens up, where Yuko is still being attacked by Shimada, who is in his parasite attack form, and luckily, she grabs this bottle of acid and throws it on his face, and it damages him to the point where he actually cannot revert back to his human form, and now that he's stuck in this, like, parasite attack mode, he's sort of, like, on auto kill mode. If anybody walks in front of him, he's just going to completely slice them in half and decapitate them. And he does so without any prejudice and it's really freaking disturbing. Luckily, Yuko decides to jump out the window and make a quick escape, but a lot of other students and teachers try to figure out what's going on and they all get thoroughly slaughtered. This is when Shinichi finally decides to investigate and there's a scene where he walks into this hallway which is just nightmarish. It's just bodies of students everywhere, blood, guts, it's just so disgusting, and it clearly has a huge mental and physical strain on Shinichi as he clutches his heart and hits the ground. And this scene is really important because, again, it's just showing the key differences between Migi and Shinichi, just how animalistic Migi is and how he just approaches this entire situation, and how Shinichi is the one who's just freaking out. Eventually, he gets his cool and he makes his way down this hallway where he does find Murano and two other students who end up just running away and getting completely slaughtered. And this is when Shinichi makes a quick escape with Murano, which she's basically enamored at just being saved and just happy to be out of this situation. And this is basically the first band-aid to fix their whole, like, broken relationship. But Shinichi decides he has to go back and finish off Shimada. And little by little, the police force are making their way inside and trying to finish him off. But they all just keep getting sliced in half and blood just exploding everywhere. And Shinichi figures out the only real way to take him out would probably be from a distance. And this was a really cool thing that I did not expect. Shinichi and Migi go on top of this building, which is across the street from the school. And he picks up this big rock. And he has Migi transform into this big muscular, like almost skeletal sharp form, which pumps itself up and then he throws this rock like a baseball across the building and it just completely obliterates Shimada's chest and he falls to the ground dead and this is when the police discover him and it's pretty obvious at this point that the police know about the parasites, the government know about them and they're trying to figure out if they should go public with it or not. What is interesting is they actually bring up the fact that they can tell the difference between humans and human parasites, and that's actually if you remove the hair. If you remove a single strand of hair from their head, it'll actually have, like, consciousness. It'll writhe away. Kind of like The Thing, 1982, Carpenter's The Thing. You gotta see that movie. It's freaking awesome. But what I really loved most about this is that it's just adding a brand new element to the show because now that the government knows about the existence of the parasites, and that there's been this incident at this high school where clearly students saw things and they're not talking about it. Like, it's only a matter of time before this, like, post-apocalyptic parasite world is about to happen. And I just can't wait to see how that's going to happen. But, uh, it, it's a good episode, too, because at the end of it, you know, both uh, Shinichi and Murano are finally starting to patch up their relationship. And they seem like they're finally on good terms. So it actually does have something of a nice ending. However, there is still a little bit of a strain between the relationship of Migi and Shinichi, and again, that's just what makes this show so great. So, what's the rundown? On this week's episode of Parasite the Maxim, another incredibly high-quality episode that is just breaking barriers for this genre. It's, it really is, like, got that old-school 80s anime vibe, the type of stuff that you only found at, like, your local video store at Blockbuster in the back section. It just has that, like, old-school feel I love. And a lot of that does have to do with the fact that it is based on an 80s manga series, but it just... I love the entire tone of all of it. And this week's episode was just really tense. It just immediately opened up, and the momentum, for the most part, was never broken through the entire episode. And just the concept that when they go into their attack mode and they're, like, on autopilot is really disturbing. 
and they demonstrate that in a lot of really cool ways and they animate it in a lot of cool ways just with the way the tendrils move or that scene when the fly is going across his face and then he just slams it into the wall. It's just really effective and it gets you really pumped up and scared for the rest of the episode. This week's episode is not going to be for the timid. It's got a lot of gore and nastiness in it and they tend to not shy away from it too much. It's mostly just a lot of blood, but it's just the fact that it's actually a high school massacre that makes it all the more disturbing and definitely, you know, tries to place this anime series into a more horror-like genre. But there's still a little bit of action. That scene where he transforms his arm and throws that rock like a baseball and like a sniper rifle at the same time which is really awesome. It shows they can do a lot of really cool things with his powers, aside from just transforming it into swords and stuff. And I really liked that. There was a lot of creativity there. And uh, just this was just a really great episode. There was actually a little bit of development for Shinichi himself. He became a little more human in this week's episode. You know, in the previous one, he had a huge falling out with Murano, and they had a bad fight. And it almost seemed like both him and Migi were sort of like becoming the same being. But it seems like he sort of like captured his old like self again in this episode. And I thought that was really interesting. The technical side of things like the animation, the artwork, again is very good. This is a very competent and beautiful looking anime series. The action scenes are well animated. Everything just looks really, really consistent. So this is a great show. It's definitely one of the hits of 2014 and one that you should definitely check out. And this week's episode was no exception. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of five, I really, really like this one a lot. I love where the series is going and how it's slowly starting to just explode and escalate into chaos. I can't wait to see where it's going. So check it out, guys. Good stuff. Thank you guys for watching my review. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And before you leave, please tell me what you thought about this week's episode of Parasite the Maxim. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you have a favorite moment? What do you want to see from the rest of this anime series? Before you guys leave, you can also subscribe to our channel by clicking on the channel icon right up here. You guys can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter.